My name is Lenny Gale. Um, my story is that I used to be in client services. I was a CPA consultant. I traveled the country. I did um, uh, built financial models. So I did a little bit of what we all do today. So um, the coding and the design of reports and the marketing of my work. I left that uh, and a really unhealthy lifestyle to start a health and wellness blog. Not here to talk about that, but I am here to talk about something I'm really passionate about, and that's life and performance and energy and productivity. Because that's something that we all struggle with every day, and it's something that if we get better at and put in a little bit of effort, we can find an amazing impact on our life. And so with that, are you guys ready to get to work? Yes. Okay. Our work. Our work. Um, so we talked about our work, and we have designers, we have developers, we have marketers, we have, te we have support. We have people that are still looking for kind of what it is. But for the most part, each of us is doing what we want to be doing, what we're passionate about, right? I mean, there, we're not working a nine to five. We're not stuck in a, in a cube. We're not really working for the men. And, and <laughs> some of us might be. But this is an amazing opportunity to be doing what we love. But this opportunity comes with a lot of responsibility, right? So let me ask, um, how many of you, raise your hand if you work in a small team. Small team, uh, you and a couple other people. Okay, so probably about half of us. Um, so in our small teams, there are so many things that we have to deal with that we're responsible for, right? We're on our project management tools, Basecamp and Asana and Trello. We're doing client meetings, right? We're, we're on our email. We're managing our inbox and our agendas. That's just, that's as a part of a small team, right? And, and then there's more, and we'll get to those. Um, raise your hand if you work uh, by yourself, if you are a solo practitioner, solopreneur. So that's like a, a quarter of us, and I don't know where the other quarter went. But yeah, so that's, uh, I, and I'm with you guys. Now, we do all the things that the people in the small teams do, plus everything else. So we're responsible for bookkeeping, and we're responsible for our own web administration, and our own social media marketing. We do it all. And so with these responsibilities, the list never ends, right? All these things that we're responsible for are constantly asking for our attention. And I made this list, uh, I, they're small for a reason. You, you're, we're not supposed to really be able to, see, there, there's so many. Status meetings, kickoff meetings, this, that, the other thing, people, the list never ends. Yeah, you can take a picture of that cluttered mess, great. <laughs> I like the other thing, and it never ends. And it never ends. <laughs> yeah, and I couldn't think of, like, that was the last one, I couldn't think of another thing, so I was like, oh, I'll just say it never ends. The, the list, people, all these things, the, the things that are constantly in our, in our brains, asking for attention, I call them knockers. <laughs> not, not those kind of knockers, <laughs> knockers, <laughs> right? These are the things that are constantly knocking at our, our head and our brain asking for our attention, needing our, 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 our focus and our decision-making ability. Knockers, okay? So think with me. What are the things that are knocking the loudest for you? Is it your agenda? Is it your email box, your inbox? Is it a particular client that's knocking the loudest? So... So let's sit on that. Let's hold that thought, right, about the knockers. And let's, oh, right. right. 
They're going to, yeah, they're going to wish they were in here. All right. All right, let's have some fun, okay? Hold the knockers thought. So uh, I'm going to ask a question. How many of you like elephants? Raise your hand if you like elephants. How can you not? They're amazing. They're so smart. They're beautiful creatures. Okay. Great. We all kind of like elephants. So I'm going to have uh, two, peop two people come help me out. So Dell and Jack, come, come up and share the stage. Give Dell and Jack a round of applause. All right. So Jack, I want you to stand here. And Dell, I want you to stand to my left. So here's what we're going to do. We're talking about elephants. So I'm going to ask Jack, who just took his glasses off. He's like prepared for something crazy. He does not know what's about to happen. I think he's ready. He's ready. OK, so Jack, here's what's going to happen. I want you to pretend you're an elephant, OK? But here's the scene. You, you are an elephant that's you're outside in this beautiful oasis and you are with your friends your other fr elephant friends and you're about to go for a swim in this beautiful latrine okay or like a like a pond or something what's a latrine like a bath i studied accounting i don't know all right, so you're going to go swimming in a beautiful stream of water, OK? You're an elephant. Ready? Right now. Go. <laughs> I'm going to call all my friends and <laughs> Yes! <laughs> He's happy. Let's hear it. Come on, more. Huh? <laughs> yes, that's a happy elephant. Look how happy he is, OK? He's going to go play with his friends and swim in the water. It's beautiful outside. Great. Now, let's now pretend you're still an elephant. But let's pretend that you are now chained by the ankle. I know it's really sad and a terrible thing. And you haven't seen your friends for like a week. And you haven't eaten for three days. OK? Go. <laughs> yeah, that's sad. He's a sad elephant. What, what, what kind of? Yeah, give him a round of applause. What kind of noise does a sad elephant make? Not much. Not much noise. Yeah, he's quiet. He's kind of just like a little sad. OK, great. Sometimes they get really aggressive, but sad works too. OK. <laughs> Del, you, your job, you are the rider of this elephant. OK? So. I'm going to ask you, uh, so you, well, you have two jobs. The first job is to ride the elephant. What do you have to say about that? <laughs> Not cool, right? Yeah. You, want, you want happy elephant. I want happy elephant. Why? Because your second job is to make decisions. You guide, excuse me, you guide the elephant. Okay. You're the rider. You guide him and you show him the way. Yeah. You make decisions on where to go. Perfect. Now, these two... The elephant and the rider, people, this is your brain. <coughs> OK? So we're going to talk about that. But first, let's give Dell and Jack a big round of applause. and the rider. Now, I want to say one thing. This idea of the elephant and the rider being your brain, this is not a, something that I came up with originally. It's from a book. It's called Switch. It's fantastic. It's all over my website. I highly recommend it. Switch. Okay. So, so the elephant and the rider, it's in your brain. Let's talk about them individually. Um, over here, the elephant. The elephant is an emotional creature. He's big, he's strong, and he's very primal. That's why we call him the emotional elephant. He likes to do things that are primal, eat, sleep, and hang out with friends and family. Okay? But the elephant, and the elephant needs guidance. 
But with the right guidance, because the elephant is so strong and so emotional, with the right guidance, the elephant can do some really special things. So that's the emotional elephant. And then over here is the rational rider. That's the other part of your brain. This little guy is small, and he's, and he's sort of weak, but he's smart. He makes decisions. He's the one that, had you, that decided, oh, I'm going to go to this talk in this room. He's the one that decided what to wear today. Every single decision that, that you make, that's the rider making that decision. So job one is to make decisions, and job two for the rider is to ride the elephant. Those are two big jobs, making every decision that you make and controlling this big primal force that, will sh that can show you the way if given the right guidance, okay? The rider and the elephant. That's your brain, okay? Emotional elephant and rational rider. We'll let that sink in. Now, um, I want to tell you my story. So I used to be in client services, um, like a lot of us. Uh, I did CPA consulting. I traveled the country. I built these financial models. They weren't WordPress models, but they had a lot of the same elements and ideas. So uh, I would do the coding to, to put numbers in to get numbers out. I would do the design of these reports to get these beautiful reports off to the CFO. And then I would do the marketing to market my work to potential new clients and, and whatever. I was really good at my job. Like, I, I, and clients loved me. I would get up in the morning and check my email immediately. I would fix all of their problems. And I would, you know, I would take phone calls uh, in the middle of the night. Anything that they needed, I would do immediately. They loved me. I was good. My clients loved me. But people, I didn't love myself. Look at this guy. That's real. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of like a mugshot. Yeah. One of the sessions earlier said to turn your shoulders so it doesn't look like a mugshot in the images. But okay, yeah. I, so I was overworked, I was overstressed, I was burnt out, and all I did was work. And so I got into this cycle, this depleting energy cycle. Really, like I would, I would go to sleep, work, eat, drink, go to bed. And the second I woke up, I would work again. And so here's what happened. It was like a downward spiral. And my work kept getting worse. My performance decreased. My energy decreased. My productivity decreased. So what's a, what a, what's a guy to do? Well, I left. I just skipped town. I had some PTO days and I went overseas. I didn't take client meetings. I didn't check my agenda. I wasn't looking at my inbox. It was great. But come on, this is not a solution to the problem, to dealing with the knockers, right? You can't just leave. We have responsibilities. We have work. We have a career. We have family. So what is? What's the solution? Okay, we're almost there. And we're <laughs> going to get to the solution. But first, I have a question. We're going to talk about uh, a thing. Teeth brushing. Uh, can I ask you a question? First of all, let me ask everyone a question. <laughs> How many of you brushed your teeth this morning? <laughs> everyone, right? I hope so. I mean, it was kind of a fun night last night. Might have skipped it. Okay. Okay, I'm now going to ask you a question. 
how did you brush your teeth this morning? So I think I I'm sorry, what's your name? Jess. Jess. I think I was actually checking my phone while I was trying to brush my teeth. Okay. So it might have started with like left hand, and I was like, this is just too So I switched to my right hand, wasn't focusing at all, and I'm like, what am I doing? Yeah. So I stopped and I only brushed my teeth. Okay, so she kind of was multitasking, but did, I mean, did you, how did you do it? Like, what was your method? With this side, yeah. which is different than I usually do because I usually okay. use my right hand. Okay. So it's like it just didn't work. Yeah. The muscle memory was all off. Okay. Okay. So then I switched to the other side and I was like, oh yeah, I always go left side of my mouth okay. to the right side. That's what you typically do, the automated prop, the automated method, like the autopilot version. So that's what I think most of us do. When we're brushing our teeth, it's automatic. Or it's I'm sorry, it's automated. It you just do it. You don't really think about the method. You learn how to do it when you're like four or five years old and you just do it. Okay? Automated. The second question, Jess, how did you decide to brush your teeth this morning? I didn't. I did, there was no intention with that. It just started happening. Right. She didn't decide. It just started happening. So that's the element making it automatic. It was just automatic. She just brushed her teeth. Okay. Last question. I promise. Um, why did you brush your teeth this morning? Um, habit, physical hygiene, and I knew I was going to be meeting people today. You're right, <laughs> yeah, it was a, it was a magic thing, and you knew, she knew she would be meeting people today. She's a, a civilized, <laughs> uh, hygienic human being in a part of society, right? That's her value. That's Jess's value. All right, thank you. Jess, everyone give Jess a round of applause. All right. So that's, that's a ritual, people. Brushing your teeth is a ritual. And the keys to rituals, like brushing your teeth, is these three things. They're automated. You don't have to think about doing them, how to, how to brush your teeth. It just happens. You've gone through the process before. You know the best way to do it. It just happens. You don't think about it. The second thing is it's automatic. You don't have to decide if you should brush your teeth. Why should I brush? You know, what? It's automatic. And the third is that it's based on strongly held values, these rituals. You brush your teeth because you're a, a, a member of society that, who's hygienic and you want to be liked. Now, think back to when we were talking about the elephant and the rider. Who benefits from these rituals? The elephant or the rider? The rider. I heard both. So I heard elephant and rider, and that's kind of both, right? So for the elephant, elephant loves brushing its teeth, right? It feels good. And he's going to have more friends, probably, <laughs> with good breath, right? That's why the elephant likes it, primal. And then the rider, why does the rider like these rituals? Like a ritual like brushing his teeth. Doesn't have to decide how to do it and doesn't have to decide if and when. It just happens. Okay? Rituals. These rituals, people, these rituals are the key to our success. Our brain benefits from these rituals. But our brain only benefits from these rituals if we can do them in peace. You hear that? It's the knockers. The knockers are coming in trying to disturb our rituals. So what do we tell the knockers? Do not disturb. So when we're doing these rituals, like brushing our teeth, we tell the knockers, do not disturb. So for example, at breakfast, when you're, or in the morning, when you're having breakfast, you're not on your phone checking your agenda. Or at lunch, when you're going outside to get fresh air, you're not on social media. Or when you're at dinner with your person, you're not taking a, a phone call. 
So here's the key, though, is that you have to have the confidence to say to the knockers, to these responsibilities that we have, do not disturb. And know that they might kind of keep coming, you know, trying to disturb you. But with, with persistence, they'll slowly fade away. Now, so think about someone knocking at your door, and there's a do not disturb sign. They might still knock. But if they see the sign enough times, they're going to get the point, and they're going to fade away. So you have to have the confidence to be persistent <coughs> in telling the knockers, do not disturb. Why? So what are the benefits? Well, first of all, oops. Ah, it's going so good. What are the benefits? It's energizing. These rituals are so energizing. Why? This is specifically with the rider. You're not making decisions. You have a limited capacity in your brain to make decisions and to, uh, to control that emotional elephant in your brain. So if you're doing less work, it's energizing. These rituals, people, they're motivating. Think about going on vacation. When you come back from vacation, you're like, oh, I want to do work. I'm ready to get back at it. It's, mo it's motivating. And the third one, this is so cool, it, it will enhance your productivity. People, when we do these rituals and we're more energized, we are less likely to make mistakes in our complex tasks, like development, like design, like everything that we do in our job. That's going to make us more productive. So when do we do these rituals? Before work, during work, after work? Guys, before work, every morning, I make breakfast. And I'm not, this is the first thing I do. I make breakfast religiously. I don't decide if I'm going to make breakfast. I don't decide what I'm going to make for breakfast. I just make breakfast. I make this omelet. It's amazing. And I'm not doing social media or my agenda or email. All right, at lunch, I get outside and I go have some fresh air. You know, it, it doesn't matter if we're working from home, remotely, if we're working in an office. But this is something that we can do during the workday. Just go get some fresh air. This is my dog. She's not having the best time ever, but, like, she's outside. She's breathing the fresh air, getting some sun, all right? And then after work, people, you can turn your computer off and go hang with your family and your friends. These are my friends. <laughs> I have a lot of dog friends, okay? But, I, but the decision's been made and my computer's closed. So here's the challenge, people. Start to address the knockers. But start small. Uh, get up in the morning and, and do 15 push-ups. Or... Um, uh, make breakfast or go for a, a walk with, with your person. But people, don't check your agenda before. Don't check your email before. And don't check your social media before. <clears throat> because that stuff's all going to be there when you get back. And you've gone through your rituals in peace. And It's worth it. <laughs> so, now I like to do this towards the end of this talk, and I, you know I like to give advice to my former self. Um, this guy that was uh, overworked, overstressed, and the first piece of advice is this: former self, there's no such thing as a client emergency. If there's an emergency, they can just call nine one one, right? <laughs> No such thing as a client emergency. Uh, uh, thing two, hard work, self, is like a drug. Uh, it, it's addicting. And you get paid to do it. But nobody likes a drug addict. So come on, man. Like, put it down. 
Um, and then the last thing, and this is sort of advice to everyone here, is uh, love your life and love yourself and don't be afraid to say do not disturb. Thanks. <laughs> Questions? No? I don't blame you. I wouldn't have questions either. Yeah? Say here that there's a, uh, only one of them is a drug on the bottom of the... Oh, yeah, yeah. So caffeine, like I, uh, coffee. Oh. Yeah, that's part of my breakfast. Yeah, that's, that's part of my routine. <laughs> coffee and an omelet and... Yeah, I do like... I have like a whole routine. I actually do like yoga and meditation and stuff, but I don't tell people to do that right away. It's, the key is to start slow and... Um, Try and get get the day started off on the right foot. Yeah. What do you think about like chunking off oh, off your time to say like for this hour I'm gonna check out walk the dog like yeah or whatever and then I'll go back to work and yeah then, like for this hour. That's the key is like uh, if you're gonna take time for yourself uh, going for a walk in the middle of the day that's putting that on your agenda <laughs> and that's stuff that you cannot be disturbed from doing. And so you get kind of both benefits of, you've told yourself that that's time for you, and you also told anyone who has access to your calendar that's time for you, and that's blocked off. And yeah. it's no different than having a meeting where you can't be, where you know, you're not taking email or calls. Yeah. That is a, a great trick to accomplish this type of thing, is just put it on your agenda. Yeah, every day at two o'clock, no matter what I'm doing, I stop, stop. pick up the guitar. Yeah. For 30 minutes, 30 minutes. Yeah, and like even if you don't want to, like you're in the midst of something amazing, and or you're grinding through some problem, and you you, you feel like you're just stuck there, and it's like, oh, I can, I can do it, I can keep pushing through, but like just forcing yourself to close the computer. Like I have a a reminder that goes off at 5:45 every day. Feed Lucy. It's my dog. Like that means the day is done. Shut it down. You know, pick it maybe pick it up later, maybe. But okay, fine. So yeah, great. It's great. What else? Yeah, back there. Um, so you also saw the mugshot, and you said you changed their life. What was the tipping point? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, the tipping point was I was like 40 pounds bigger than I am now, um, and I just I needed to um, find something that was meaningful to me in life besides being good at my job. And... Um, Going overseas kind of opened my eyes to what life can be um, when you're not sort of uh, on. What's that? When you change your mind. Yeah, yeah. When you, when you're not in control, when you're not ha being controlled by someone completely, having that freedom for a few weeks while I was away opened my eyes. And also, like looking in the mirror, and I was like, "Whoa, holy crap! Like, that's not cool." Yeah, good question. Yeah. Hi, I'm Natalie. Hi, Natalie. Um, how do you, I guess, be on time? So when you are when you are on your grind and you're doing your work, yeah. I think that line of addiction is so fine because yeah. you can start crank, crank, crank. I have a tendency to go. Yeah. And I don't want to stop. <laughs> yeah. And I like the joke saying, well, I'm a child, I'm good at it, so I give myself whatever I want. Right, and right. And all play, all work. Right. So how do you keep your work time? I'm getting too, too over the top. Yeah. It's just feeling like an easy routine to start slipping back into. Like, do you have good tracking in terms of your scheduling? How do you set your boundaries? Yeah, so how do you set, right, so, so how do you set your boundaries? How do you, really are on your ground. how do you avoid the trap of overworking yourself um, without limitation? How do you set boundaries? And a lot of times it's arbitrary. Um, my six o'clock deadline to when my workday ends, it's arbitrary. But that's a, that's a reasonable time when things start outside of work. Dinners, softball games. Um, that, so it, it's sort of arbitrary. And you have to just set it. And uh, be confident that you will be able to fit in more and get more done in the time that you give yourself than if you don't have that deadline. Yeah, good question. Your quick time is really 
Yeah, yeah. It really, it's like it shut the laptop and like stretch and then just go, like go, like done, done. <laughs> it's tough. It took me a long time to get there though. It's baby steps. Natalie, good question. So you just avoid any emergencies after six o'clock? You, you just don't answer them? Yeah, and, and the key, so the question is, do you, ju you just avoid emergencies six, at six o'clock? Do you not answer calls after six? And the answer is yeah. And if the expectation is set with clients, that's, that's the expectation. And uh, they, they'll, you know, they can get an answer from me at eight in the morning. Um, but when you have clients that expect you to always be there, they're going to keep pushing the envelope. But what I think people, what I found is that clients actually respect you more, value you more, uh, when you set those boundaries. And it's, 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 you're going to get, you're going to make more money doing that because you're going to be more valuable. They're, you know, they're going to recommend you more. It's counterintuitive, but like, it's kind of like, you know, like cats, like cats are kind of like a little coy. Like I'm not saying to be coy, but like being a little less available and a little selfish, if the expectation is set, is okay. And it's going to benefit everyone. It's kind of like raising children. Okay. I don't know about that. I don't have children. No, I can tell. Thank you. <laughs> you can tell. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. He said a limit with a child, you have to stick to your gun. And you, as soon as right. you give in, yeah. they're going to know if they keep calling, you're going to keep giving in. And yeah. eventually you will have to Yeah, so, she, so, you're, so Kathy, I think is your name, she's saying to, to set the limits with the child, and then once they know the, the, the expectations and the boundaries. So I have a little bit of experience with children. I was a camp counselor, and one of the things that we were taught is to set the rules early and because you can always loosen them up. So after lunch, there would be a time, it was called, it was quiet time basically. It was like one hour after lunch where everyone just, it's just quiet. And, and every counselor naps, like you're exhausted, you wanna sleep, but if you, if you don't say that, okay, this hour is silent time, you're never gonna get to sleep. So it was, so that example, it's important on day one with your children they're kind of like clients, children, clients, they're the same thing, basically. Set expectations. This is, how, this is how we do things around here. And if you're not cool with that, see you later. And you'll always have children that will set the limits. Every, the, people push the envelope. People push the envelope, yeah. You give in, and and they know they got absolutely, yeah, question, yeah. Uh, actually, kind of like into this, but I'm not sure exactly what it was, but thank you. You're, you're welcome. welcome. Thanks. Thanks. Anyway, uh, yeah, I kind of, I'm 19 now, and I kind of like am in that mindset uh, where like I do passion projects and stuff all the time. Like, right. I don't sleep well. Like I work right. all the time. Right. Work so 19 hours a day. And it's just like, right. So so if he's saying that he works 19 hours a day, he's, he's 19 hours a day. You're 19, and he's he's 19, and he works 19 hours a day. So hopefully it's not every year you live you add an hour. <laughs> um, but. I get that. So as you're early, as you are at the infant stages of your career, you want to work more because you have, you know, you have the energy, you have the time, you don't have the obligations like family and like kids and like other things. And that's fine. So your boundaries aren't 6 p.m. until, you know, until the next morning, until the next day. Maybe it's 6 p.m. until 10 p.m. And then you can turn it back on at 10 p.m. and that's fine. So kind of sliding those boundaries to what fits for you, but as long as there are boundaries, you're going to find people a profound change in your life. These, these boundaries. Do not serve. Yeah? So if you have any clients that you have before you make the change and after the change, how easy is it to maintain your relationships? Okay, so that's a really good question. Uh, I, <laughs> yes. New clients I took, they, they knew the deal. And uh, I was happier, they were happier. Seriously. I mean, it, it may have been because like I was better at what I was doing. I was more confident. Confidence comes, you know. But yes, I, I did and I saw, I, I saw the benefit of setting those boundaries with, with, with clients.
Christmas, yeah. How about the old clients, the existing clients? Uh, the ones that you were available to at 10 o'clock at night that you now want. Yeah. Is that two different professions? Well, well what would happen is I would, I would just say I have to, well, I would, there were sort of big projects. So I would just say I have to go, to, I need a new client. You know, it's like, I mean, it's like being in a bad relationship. Like, you know, you, <laughs> seriously, you got, I, if someone's going to walk all over you, that's wow. never changing. And this is, it should, it's, it, it's not meant to turn into a relationship advice session. <laughs> but like, don't let people walk all over you. And then once they do, goodbye. Because that's not going to change. Yeah. Right? I wouldn't say my clients walk all over me, but I've been flexible. I, I've always been a night person. So that's okay. I had a niche in that I could do things after other people couldn't. People after. work better at different times. Yeah. The key is to be able to have time for yourself and to be able to do these rituals that allow for yeah. enhanced productivity, energy, performance, blah, blah, blah. I shouldn't feel bad when I tell them, don't call me before noon, but you can call me after 8 p.m. Yes. Absolutely. That's okay. terrific. Yeah. What else? Yeah. What about, like, for me, I've got so many of the numbers from different areas yeah. of life. Yeah, yeah. You know, I do volunteer work, too, mm -hmm. and I have family. Like, do you ever, right. like, what do you think about like, making lists or just brain dumps or just to get it out? Yeah. Oftentimes, I'll forget. You forget. And halfway through the week, I'm like, oh, my gosh, I was supposed to get this done, you know, yesterday. Or it's just so many different things. Right. So I love to hear about your system. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what kind of systems? <laughs> okay. So I'm not perfect at this. I struggle with this type of stuff too. Um, I have two types of checklists. I have a long-term projects, and I have a short-term, like almost daily stuff that I have to cross off. Um, do, you do, do you have a time like every morning? Do you sit down and make a list or your yeah, okay, oh, oh, yeah, so here's what I do. I have that list of big projects that I want to accomplish. I have blog projects, I have house projects, you know, paint the whatever, I have family projects. And then every day, when I start my day, I open up my journal and I write, here's the date, here's, I'm grateful for these three things, just arbitrary, that makes me feel good. And then I say, here's my plan. And I, I have one big thing, so that's like write, that's like hammer out this blog post, write it, or figure out how to make this recipe, or like whatever. And then, and then after that one big thing, I have like, I limit myself to like five or so like little annoying things. And that's it, I mean, uh, and I, I try and cross them off, because I, I found that if I had more than one big thing, I didn't either of them. <laughs> But you want to, I, so you want to, I've found that it takes a lot of discipline to, to get yourself outside of the get the urgent stuff done mode. And so, so, okay. What is not urgent is yourself. Okay, so how much time do we have? We have 10 minutes. I mean, so I, I've recently just, uh, read this thing, hey, guys, yeah, feel free, like, we're getting, like, into the nitty-gritty here. There's, like, a grid, important and urgent. You heard about this? Yeah. So, in, in quadrant one, it's, like, important and urgent. Quadrant two is important, not urgent. Three is urgent, not important. And four is neither, okay? Quadrant four is where I love to go. It's just, like, goofing around on YouTube. Like, that magic shtick, like, I'll, like, watch magic videos. It's, like, it's weird. Like, I'll just get lost in YouTube videos. But you don't want to be there. You also don't want to be in the third quadrant. Even though, like, sometimes you just have to, like, that's how we survive in our jobs. And that in the third quadrant is urgent but not important. That's, like, updating this blog post or responding to this, com this comment or, you know, dealing with this issue. Like, oh, you know, someone's going to hate me if I don't, or, you know, I'm going to be fined if I don't, or, you know, all the just urgent stuff. My understanding is you want to spend your time in that quadrant too. Not urgent, important. So that's like, um, for me, like this talk, 
that's one of those quadrant two things. Like this talk probably took me like a month to come up with a concept and like sketch it out and like just put it all together into practice. Like that's the stuff, that's not urgent, but that's like career changing, that's like life changing, that's stuff you can really be proud of and go talk to people about it. Or like, you know, to, that'll change your life. So I'm rambling at this point, but I think, um, Yeah, yeah, that's that's absolutely like it, that's the uh, Dwight, it's the Eisenhower or Dwight Eisenhower thing. Yeah. So that I don't know if that answers your question. Yeah, okay. I think I think the biggest thing is getting in the habit of doing it every day. I mean, I'll often say to myself, I don't have time to make a list. <laughs> I can just keep it in my head, but I don't. And I, I just so it helps. It helps me every day to make a list. Every day that I oh, one more thing. At the end of the day. If I'm really doing good with my productivity, yeah, like at the end of the day, I make my list. If that's if I'm like really hitting it hard and like doing it great, like end of the day, the last thing on my agenda for the day is to make the plan for tomorrow, and then my tomorrow is awesome. <laughs> so I'm not perfect at this stuff. Like, you know, I love procrastinating, but like, I I, I kind of know how to do it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So that would be my that'd be my tip. End of the day, make yourself an agenda for the next day. Last thing you do, shut your computer. After all that rambling, that's my recommendation. But you know what else feels good? Crossing stuff off. Yeah, those, that's great. Yeah. Do you have a question back? Sorry to interrupt. Do you have one question? Yeah. How do you how do you implement that? What's that? How do you implement that on a team level? Like, so we're talking individually in a lot of different aspects, but on a team level, let's say all of us are what we're calling so let's say yeah. On a team level, right? How do you force others to? No, it's not necessarily force, but influence. Encourage. Yeah, influence, encourage. Lead by example. So the question is, how do you get your team members to get a whole, you know, to get a grip on their life and to be more, to to help themselves so that they can be more productive in their work? And my answer is to be to lead by example. So. If you tell your team, all right, from six to eight, I'm out. Like, I'm offline. Maybe they'll do it, too. Yeah. Lead by example. Yeah. That's what I try and do. It's like my life, I guess. Anyone else? All right, this was fun, guys. Thanks. Thanks.